What is up everybody? I'm no Lux Given here with your afternoon snap and today the Superflow is the featured location so I figured we'd take a look at a junk style deck because there's lots of tools in this deck to mess with your opponent while they are trying to make use of the Superflow. I didn't actually play either of these games today. Uh, this is just a good deck and I think it's particularly well suited with Superflow as the featured location. So I figured now was a good time to showcase it, but you can play this deck anytime if you don't watch this video today. Uh, it's just a cool deck. It got top eight in the recent Battle Arena 2 on SnapFan by Wa Se Le. Hopefully I'm pronouncing their name correctly and they called it space block because it's not just your typical junk deck there's some interesting things here like storm and spider-man that you don't typically see in junk list just a lot of interesting ways to mess with your opponent and a lot of fun ways to just take advantage of the super flow or stop your opponent from taking advantage of the super flow uh, is potentially a better way to put it Titania and Viper will shut off the super flow for both players. Same thing with Storm, you can just storm the super flow, though I think that's kind of in poor taste, but Green Goblin, that's the main one. You Green Goblin the super flow, and this is a pretty cool Green Goblin list from my experience. You can also Juggernaut your opponent's cards into the super flow as a means to turn it off for them. Uh, and then of course there's uh, some other fun synergies and some really weird and interesting cards in this deck as well. So we're gonna look at two games, like I said, and uh, this is the first one here. This one's pretty straightforward. As you'll see, we hit an Olympia. Uh, so we're gonna have a lot of different options. And we're just basically gonna go with the very straightforward game plan of locking my opponent out of two different locations. We're going to storm and we storm into Warrior Falls because that's a location that my opponent is not super likely to play to. And then we're going to play something into the stormed location and then I'm going to Spider-Man one of the locations, one of those other two locations on the penultimate turn, which will allow me to hopefully win that location on the final turn of the game. Pretty straightforward. You can see how it's all going to line up from here. Sentry is kind of an interesting card that could allow us to take advantage of um, adding a lot of power to that flooded location, which I might actually need because my opponent uh, kind of gets me here a little bit. They are playing a destroy deck, so by playing into the Warrior Falls, uh, it's a little bit tricky because I was expecting them to not play there or I was expecting them to play there and play cards they wanted to get destroyed, and then I turned the location off. So either way kind of works for me, but my opponent's kind of killing it right now in the flooded location. That seven power Winter Soldier is actually still beating me there. So that's a little bit awkward, but we do draw Dr. Doom. So we will potentially be able to get away with that if Spider-Man can make it so that we are still able to grab the win in Olympia. My opponent plays three cards to Olympia, but that third one is going to be a Deathlock, so they will only have five power there, which means we are just barely losing with that Spider-Man, but we'll be able to clinch it with Dr. Doom. My opponent will be able to kick my butt in Q Loon, but we'll be able to grab the win here in Olympia and the flooded location, assuming they are not playing any like uh, Arnim Zola or something like that for the final turn of the game. That one could potentially get me, but I think, yeah, they're just going to wind up playing Deadpool, Death, and a Demon. So 41 power in Q Loon, but I will get them in the other two, thanks to some creative space blocking. So that's like the straightforward game plan that this deck can take, but there's also a lot of weird and funky stuff that this deck can do as well, and we're gonna take a look at some of that in this game. Mojo World as the first location, then Luke's Bar as location number two. Uh, Luke's Bar is a location that we could potentially win with Storm on the final turn of the game, and I'm just gonna run out Viper into Mojo World because I'm gonna wanna play four cards that there and I don't really want to donate anything to my opponent. So just going to wind up leading off with the Viper in Mojo World. Uh, and then I actually just decide to Storm in Mojo World because I'm not super confident that I'm going to be able to play more cards than my opponent there and still win that location. And 
I just want to shut down a location regardless here. So I just decide to storm that mojo world. My opponent has Deathlock plus the Winter Soldier, a similar deck list as the last game. And then I'm going to run out Sentry into the flooded location. And if I can win the flooded location or get close, then uh, same thing, I can use Doctor Doom to throw a Doom Bot into Luke's bar and then add four more power into that flooded location. And that should be enough that even if I was going to lose Onslaught Citadel, I might have been okay. And that was the plan, just to lose Onslaught Citadel. But a well-timed Cosmo from my opponent will actually totally remove Sentry's drawback. And then I draw Ronin off the top of the deck. Ronin, not a card that sees a lot of play. Uh, and it is weird in this deck too, but basically the idea is to play Ronin on turn five and then on turn six, you can play Maximus Green Goblin Storm in some combination or weave in either Shang-Chi or Sentry which will only cost three with Zabu. Now, speaking of Shang-Chi, my opponent actually Shang-Chi's my Ronin this turn and doesn't leave me with any power in Onslaught Citadel. Thought I was making out really well there, but I should still be able to win this game with Dr. Doom, adding a Doombot to Luke's bar and to that flooded location just for a little bit of insurance like I brought up not too long ago. My opponent is going to play a Wolverine, a Yondu, and they might try to get this Wolverine into one of those other two locations, but I think we'll be covered due to the Doombot as long as it doesn't go into Luke's bar. That would be the only bad location for me. Then it would be a game of differential, which I would have lost. So 66% to win this game, wind up taking it for eight cubes as my opponent stays in it there. Makes sense that they did decide to play it out. Uh, but then once I got them for eight cubes, this was in Silver Conquest, by the way, but sometimes you get up by eight cubes and your opponent just says, I've had enough. So that is going to be it for this video. I do think that this deck is really cool. Let me know if you try it out and if it surprises you with some weirder cards that you wouldn't often play. Um, I can go over, throw the deck list on the screen again a little bit. So I did bring up, I think, I was trying to get all this in quickly, that uh, Maximus is used to pump up your Ronin. Uh, you can use Viper to donate your Void from Sentry to your opponent. Uh, and then there's kind of like, uh, uh, yeah, just some other fun tricks that you can do with locking your opponent out of locations. Titania is always kind of a crazy card to wrap your head around. And then Doctor Doom is just a lot of power. It's uh, 13 power on the final turn and uh, yeah you can mess around with all of these things let me know what you think of it in the comments down below but for today that's going to be it for me thank you very much for watching i'm no luck given peace